Dabo, uh, congratulations. This playoff is a little bit different because of the amount of time or the lack of time that you have between conference championship game and the semifinals. How, how do you plan to address that and have your team uh, rested yet in peak form? Yeah, it's very different. I mean, it's uh, we just talked about that this morning. It's it's basically like an open date. It's almost identical to what we we just had with Notre Dame. Uh, in fact, we, I think we got a couple less days than we had in preparation for uh, for Notre Dame. So, you know, we we play in 12 days. We got 11 days to get ready, uh, but we got a couple of days, you know, that, that you got to give them off in there. So, just got to maximize our time and, and literally. It's it's not a bowl mentality. It's, it, normally we would be off a week after the ACC championship game, and then have probably three or so weeks to get ready. Uh, so it's just treat it like an open date and uh, and get ready, maximize your time, uh, and, and uh, we're excited about it. You know, at the end of the day, you're in the playoffs, and uh, that's, that's a that you know our goal was to win the ACC championship, and if we did that, we knew we'd have an opportunity to be in the playoffs. So just proud of this team and. You know, we got one goal left, and that's uh, win the closer. And if we can do that, it's going to be a special, special ending. Uh, the opponent in the semifinal in the Sugar Bowl is one that you know well, having played Ohio State in the playoff a year ago. Uh, what's your reaction to seeing the Buckeyes again, particularly against, against a Buckeye team that's only played six games up to this point? <clears throat> Well, I mean, not surprised uh, because that's, you know, what the committee has, has demonstrated over the past few weeks. So, uh, you know, that's the decision the committee made. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, congratulations to those guys. I mean, we're excited to compete. We, we all know Ohio State is an incredibly talented team. And, and uh, you know, we look forward to a, to a great matchup. You know, we had a heck of a game with them last year. And I and, uh, doubt it'll be anything different uh, this year. It's going to be a great competitive game both teams fighting probably come down to a few plays and uh, you know we'll be uh, we'll be looking forward to it uh, back in uh, New Orleans coach you've always been terrific at uh, at making your team feel like they're the underdog with the we're on the other bus and these guys are so much better well now you're the favorite uh, and the numbers are coming out the way you guys played yesterday uh, people think you're great now so there's not going to be this underdog role how are you going to motivate your team <clears throat> well, I mean, really just do what we've been doing. I, I think we've won more games than anybody in the last five years. So I, I, we haven't been an underdog very much. Uh, we've pretty much been a favorite in just about every game uh, outside of just a couple. So we just do what we do. I mean, we respect every opponent. Uh, we have to have great preparation. Uh, you know, we have to be you know, practice with purpose, uh, you know, great effort with an emphasis on technique. And everybody's got to be committed. You got to be committed, uh, you know, on and off the field to get yourself ready, you know, in every regard, mentally, physically, you name it. So uh, really just nothing different. I mean, it's, this is something that we, we know we're going to get everybody's best shot every single week. And uh, that's been the case for a long time. And so, um, you know, we're just excited to be back in it and look forward to uh, competing against a great team. Coach, I wanted to ask you about your offense. I think coming into this year, we all knew Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne and Amari Rogers. I think a lot of people forget there were a lot of new faces at the start of the year. You had four new offensive linemen. T. Higgins got drafted. Justin Ross has a neck injury. He's out. And you've had a lot of less experienced players, lots less productive players over the years, really step up and make some big plays for you as the season gone, has gone on. How pleased have you been with the players around Trevor Lawrence and those guys and how your offense has really come through, especially late this year? Yeah, it's been incredible. And uh, again, to me, that even further emphasizes the, the, the greatness of Trevor Lawrence. Uh, in that, you know, uh, we, if you'd have told me back in March uh, that we weren't going to have Justin Ross, uh, Ngata, and Frank Latson for all and most of the year, uh, you know, I don't, I, it, and then tell me that we're going to go and throw for more yards than any team in Clemson history. You know, this team broke the 2016, Deshaun Watson, Mike Williams, all those guys, uh, you know, that are all in the NFL now. Uh, and so I, I wouldn't have believed it. Uh, so the credit goes to, you know, these guys stepping up, man. Cornell and Amari have been amazing. 
the emergence of EJ, our tight ends, what, what we've done with Travis Etienne in the passing game, uh, what he's done this year, rushing and receiving, hasn't been done since Saquon Barkley. Uh, and it's only been done four times in 20 years. You know, so he, he's been unbelievable. We've had to, uh, you know, manufacture different ways. And, and, but again, it all goes through Trevor Lawrence. And that just, to me, uh, people don't really understand how special he is. So uh, it's been an incredible year. Uh, really proud of our staff and our team for finding a way. People have no idea what uh, football teams have navigated this year and, and how they've had to sacrifice and commit uh, and, and to play 11 games and to be 10 and one and ACC champs and to have all these guys out, uh, but yet still do what we did offensively. Man, I'm just, uh, you know, really proud of this group. Coach, speaking of guys that are out, Nolan Turner, the most experienced guy in your secondary, gets a targeting call. I'm not going to I'm not gonna ask about the targeting rule. That needs to be changed. That's stupid. That's for another time, another day. You just, you just decided. You, did, yeah, you, just, you but, just said it was stupid. I'm just, I'm just saying we need to get that fixed later on. But talk about what that impact means going into the next game. And um, you could see on the sidelines you guys were pretty fired up about it right away. Yeah, we'll miss Nolan. There's no question. I mean, he's he's been a quarterback for us. He's a great player. I mean, you know, and what a great example he is. You know, he had no 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 Division One offers, and here we are talking about him on the playoff Sunday. Nolan Turner he had no Division One offers, but here this kid is is had an unbelievable career. Uh, he'll be drafted one day, and he he's played as well at safety for us this year as any safety we've had, and uh, so he'll be a big miss for us. But the, the silver lining in 2020, uh, if you will, is, you know, we've had to play more people than ever. We've started 23 different people on defense this year. That's the most by far uh, since, since Coach Venables has been here for sure. Uh, we usually average about 16 a year. So we've had a lot of guys get a lot of experience. You know, we're getting Landon, Z we got Landon Zanders back uh, yesterday, first game he's played in a while, Zanders. You know, Joseph Charleston's gotten a lot of experience, Ray Thornton, Tyler Venables, uh, you know, uh, RJ Mickens. So we've been able to grow some guys up, get some experience, create some depth there that we feel good about. So thankfully he's not out the whole game, uh, but hopefully those guys will step up and do a good job till he can get back out there in the second half. Dabo, the, uh, the one thing that a global pandemic cannot stop is, is a pizza party uh, on Sunday at Clemson. Um, the question, that a lot of people want to know is what type of pizza did you go with today for yourself? Oh, I'm a I'm a I'm a pepperoni guy, yeah. no doubt. I mean, yeah. I'll even go double pepperoni if I get a chance to order that. But, uh, yeah, just 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 pepperoni. Keep it simple. As you guys know, we had Krispy Kreme yesterday say. and pepperoni pizza today. That's about as good a weekend as I, it gets. If I was you're, gonna say, if you're an man, old boy from Alabama. Krispy Kreme and pizza. I don't, I don't know about your, your diet better. these days, but you got Krispy Kreme yesterday, and you got you doubling down on the pepperoni. It's not championship phase. <laughs> it's not championship phase. Good jeans. It's, nope. That's a good jeans. Good, good jeans. Not good. They're carb loading hey, for Ohio State. Don't, yeah. Hey, look, don't listen to these guys. You look to be in the peak of. Oh, he does, man. He works out every day. He know, told hey. me. That lunch, hey, right? hey, I will. I will say. Hey, hey, Kurt. Kurt. Yeah. Hey, Kurt. I, hey, Kirk. I will say this. Them Herb Street boys were tearing that pizza up. I just want you to know that. So it was oh, a good yeah. pizza day for the team. feeding them at home. <laughs> yeah. The little man at Too home. Too many greens. Yeah. I love what it. What do you, Kirk? Hey, Kirk, what do you do? Kirk, Kirk, I want to know, like, do you, do you not, do you not talk to them, like, for two weeks? How does this work? Like, no. y'all just not, will y'all see each other for Christmas or do they just cut no. you off for, like, nope. cut the me next off. 12 days? Nope, I will not just ask talk a to question. Mom. I won't say anything. They talk to mom. I'm out of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Davo, congratulations uh, on making the playoff again. I love we, it. We appreciate love it. it. Man, hey, hey, isn't this great? <laughs> I, it's hey, awesome. I, I think it, hey, isn't it, this great, guys? Isn't this great that is we're at this moment? We're getting a chance to have football and a playoff. It's awesome. I, I think it, it, it is. I mean, with all the things that the entire country and the culture and sports fans have been through, been difficult, been controversial, but at least we get to play and we get to eat pizza and we get to hear about the Herb Street boys uh, trying to go back and win themselves a ring and be able to, yes. to show it off to mom and dad. And there's a lot of and there's a lot there's a lot of people out there hurting yep. and no doubt, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there hurting and I know that.
football brings joy to a lot of people. And uh, that means a lot to, to, to me. It means a lot to this team. And, and uh, these guys have been unbelievable sacrifice this year for all these teams involved. Uh, so congratulations to everyone. And, uh, you know, look forward to a, a great postseason.